Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics, man. This is where we talk about the films that shaped and warped our childhoods, and I'm here with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, man, I, I was worried about you over the weekend, man. You kind of went MIA, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I went missing for a little minute. It was fun, though, you know, it was fun. You know, I know y'all can't see my golden tan I got going on. I'm still quite pasted, but, you know, it was it was fun. Since your phone was, was broken up, and I was like, I was like, damn, oh, baby, you got locked up. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I would have went out there solo, mm, baby, I, I, you know, but no, I was out there with my daughter, man. So yeah, if I get jammed when I'm with my sprout, man, that's uh, I'm not acting right. <laughs> I, mean, I got all kinds of thoughts. It's like, man, I might have to speak at the funeral. It's like, damn, who, who am I gonna get to replace him, man? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, who the hell goes to the beach and dies? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but, but we back, uh -huh. man, you know, so uh, today we got a very special film, man. This is definitely a certified cult classic, man. Yes, yes. This is like a heavy hitter of cult films, man, and, and it hit at a time. It, it's, it's definitely a product of its time yes. um, by one of our favorite directors, man. We're probably going to, by the time, you know, as we get going with this thing, we're going to probably go through most of this guy's film catalog, yes. but, but we're talking about um, John Carpenter's um, Big Trouble in Little China, which mm -hmm. came out in 1986. The synopsis is this. Um, uh, we got a hard-boiled truck driver, Jack Burton, who gets caught in a bizarre conflict within and underneath San Francisco's Chinatown. An ancient Chinese prince and Chinatown crime lord has kidnapped a beautiful green-eyed woman who is the fiancé to Jack's best friend. Jack must help his friend rescue the girl before the evil low pan uses her to break the ancient curse that keeps him a fleshless and immortal spirit, man. And uh, this film is, is even has a heavy hitting cast for the time, man. We've got Kurt Russell as our um, hero star, Jack Burton. Um, his homie, um, Dennis Dunn, um, who plays Wang Chi. And we got um, the legendary James Hong as David Lopan, our evil um, wizard, magician. <laughs> we even got a city girl, um, Kim Cattrall, <laughs> who plays Gracie Law. <laughs> uh, Susie Pye, um, uh, Victor Wong is in this, man. If you know him from, um, my favorite role of his is uh, from The Golden Child. Definitely. Breaking my hard ass white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carter Wong, Peter Wong, James Pax, Donald Lee, um, and it goes on, man. Like a lot of these guys, um, is crazy. Um, especially Al Leong is in here too, man. If yeah. you know him, he's that Asian guy that was in everything, man. If yeah. you, I think um, Da Hard, he was in there. Um, yeah. A lot of TV at the time, yep. like he was that Asian guy. He was yep. always the, the one Asian guy to be a group of bad guys, and he'd be the Asian guys, but. This thing is is uh, pretty cool because you know a lot of these actors are um, and Donald Lee too. I recognize him in here, but a lot of these actors, you know, after this film, you know, they went on to do everything, you know, have you know great careers. But this also this Asian cast man was it was kind of a first to have so many of you know these people together in this film yes. on an American made production, right? You know, right. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was big. Most of the, I mean, we the weird thing is we've seen some of these um, actors before, but they were you know usually in you know dubbed and martial arts flicks and things like that that were bringing being brought over. But but it's kind of crazy to see them get some shine here and get to do this film you know and you know in this way in this kind of grand fashion you know Hollywood style. Yeah, and most definitely, and to your point, you know, I love this cast. You know, Kurt Russell, he kills it as Jack Burton. But, you know, what helps elevate him and his performance outside of him bringing that, that big screen presence, big personality to his own character is the supporting cast. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, um, I like how you gave me the answer like this was first, like this was Jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't even get to ask you. So, what do we like about this film? <laughs> well, 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 that was that, that was yeah. That was just that was that was that was the appetizer because you know you can't talk about how 
you know, what I love about this film more than anything is the characters, but mm-hmm. that is brought to us by the cast. So, you know, you know, I had to show love to the actors, actresses, the real life individuals mm-hmm. before I just gush over the characters. That is what I love about this film. This, mm-hmm. this film is just has a plethora of characters that are mm-hmm. so rememberable and so likable on all phases. I mean, from what you get from Jack Burton and, and Wang, I love them mm-hmm. as our as our heroes, and then and then even with Victor Wong coming in as a Egg Sheen, he's he's super dope. But on the other side of the fence, this film has some very very awesome villains. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Where you get, I mean, for starters, they got the coolest name. You know what I'm saying? They call them the three storms, and then you got you got them rain, guys. thunder, and lightning. Mm-hmm. And I mean, those guys. From the costumes to just the the on screen presence to the the martial arts, the, the all the you know all the the action that they bring on the the bad side of the front, but then you get low pain, mm-hmm. and I mean he is just he's badass. He's too. great, man. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know, you know it's so messed up because time has passed so far. I would mm-hmm. love to see um, um, James Hong as low pain again, yes. but but he's he's really a kind of an elderly man now. Um, I will want to point out, if you haven't seen everything all at once, one of the best films this year, probably the best that, that I've seen so far. And he has a great role in there, man. It's great that they were able to get him and, and, and show kind of show respect to him by casting in him that and letting him do his thing. But he's great in that. But he's he's so good in this, man. He's such an iconic villain, yo. That that yeah. low pan is yeah. ridiculous, man. But 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 that's another thing too, man. I will point out like the casting of this thing, like like to your point, is so great, man. And yes. and um one of the things, man, like like I'm not such a big fan of um, Escape from New York. I know people love that film and it's got its, you know, the hard fan base. But I feel like Jack Burton is such a greater character yes. in this film than, 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 than Kurt Russell playing um, Snake Plissken. He just has more to work with. Yes. <laughs> people like Plissken because he's just so tough and just, just he's one note. But this is a more well-rounded guy. He's kind of a jackass, but but he, like, like we were talking about this before, like yesterday, but he has a good heart, you know what I'm saying? Good heart. <laughs> and, I mean, and, and his, his approach, like, mm-hmm. he, you know, like you said, even though he's kind of an a-hole, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? His heart's in the right place. And he still finds himself, even if it's on accident, doing the right thing. Yeah. Helping people that might not be trying to help him. I mean, at the very beginning, you see him and Wang, uh, uh, yeah, him and Wang, they're, they're sitting there playing cards, and he, I mean, Jack Burton must be killing it, because it started yeah, off with a table full of folks. Yeah, yeah and, and then next thing you know, the sun's up, <laughs> and it's just him and Wang, and he's telling Wang that he owes him a couple racks, mm-hmm. and Wang's like, man, I bet you I could break this bottle, I can cut this bottle in half, <laughs> and then and then Wang gets real serious on him, when mm-hmm. Burton's like, yo, I want my money, and he was like, nah, not right now, man, I'm saving my money for my girl, dog, she mm-hmm. coming in, you know, she coming in the country today, I've been saving and slaving for, for her man so he was like and by the way did i mention she got green eyes you know how rare that is man. I mean, that's rare at least for, for people that, that aren't white you know yeah. green eyes that's that's, that's a big yeah, yeah. yeah think about it like how much um eric sermon yo he probably got mad play doing this, this green eye band and stuff yeah hey. Yeah, <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yeah, and, right and you know just before you know before we move on from from this this cast list <laughs> what what i also loved about lopan's character is we get two sides of him we get him when he is like you know when he's all powered up and you know he's he's shooting flames out his eyeballs or lights mm-hmm. from his eyeballs his mouth and and he's just this this big magician kind of villain you mm-hmm. know majestical character but I really enjoyed him when it shows him as like the withered old man. Yeah, well, so so it's crazy, man. Because I, I will admit my my rewatch of this got interrupted. Mm-hmm. But but what was going on there? Why was he having those two forms? Because I I know in the synopsis we said he's trying to break the curse because he's really kind of like this this spirit that's stuck in limbo. He's not really dead yes. and he's not really alive. And that's why he needs, um, you know. A woman with uh, green eyes because when it comes to um, what do they call it i had to write this thing down uh they, they need her to, to perform the ceremony that's going to make him what do they call um, yeah it's called the ritual of the burning blade okay and it has to be performed by uh, a woman with green eyes and you know throughout the course of the ritual you know you have to appease whatever um you know entity is got 
Lohan possessed. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Once you appease him, because see, the thing is, is when he's at his most powerful point, he's also unable to like have physical contact. Mm-hmm. Like that's why right out the gate, when Jack Burton, you know, when they drive into the alley, when like you just see like the, an all I wore at like 12 o'clock noon, it's just all these, you know, uh, yeah, clean down. I mean, great, I, mean man. Like, like, I wouldn't want to walk through that alley. I'm say this, man. Like, like, um, I think this thing benefits. I mean, we were talking earlier, it is mostly made up, but I think this film benefits from kind of delving into the Chinese mysticism, you know, and the the mythology and stuff. You know, a lot of the stuff is made up, but at least I think it's cool. You know, maybe if this film was made in more modern times with the more aware folk, they probably would have tapped into it. Like maybe like we saw recently in in the Shang-Chi film and drawn from that. But, But for something that's made up, it adds... A special dynamic to this it could have really just been ninjas fighting you know right but 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 adding those powers those, and the magic and yeah. the, and those crazy characters it, it bumps this thing up see, way higher and, you and know? that's that's the thing too because when we're first introduced to the three storms and lopan they're at their most powerful points you mm-hmm. know and that's how like i said jack burton was able to just drive his truck right through lopan whereas as we get later in the film you know it's almost like vampires mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying if if, if you know the, the versions where they can be like day walkers because lopan in his most vulnerable point is like i said he's a withered withered old man mm-hmm. he's in a wheelchair um but like I said, I like his little voice. He's like, he's, <laughs> he's got great. this crude humor he's and he's so just like, good like, this he, man. He, he, like, you know, it's so funny. But then we also get the three storms and they're kind of like, they're still his henchmen, mm-hmm. but just in a different sense. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, yeah, but yeah, so pretty much long and short, the uh, the ritual of the, the burning blade, you know, if, if, you know, the chicks can pass the test or, or the woman can pass the test, then, you know, the the entity is pleased and then he can actually as in low pan's form like in in the most powerful form can then have physical touch you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah. that's what he's missing more than anything mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and it's kind of why because the, the intro is crazy crazy man because basically uh wang chi you know um him and jack go to the airport to pick up wang chi's um girlfriend who's coming over he's going to marry her and she gets kidnapped because she's green eyed and mm-hmm. they need her for the spell and one of the interesting things, they chase the guys down that, that kidnapped her. They end up in this crazy alley in Chinatown where this whole ass war is breaking out. There's like three factions fighting each other. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, you know, that develops, but they actually, he, um, Jack drives his truck in a low pan. And it's one of the funniest moments. So look, yeah. and it's standing there in the street. And Jack's just like, Woo, boom. And the way he hits him and the way his shot is so funny. Yeah. But, but they don't, Lopan stands up and takes it off. It, it, man, it, 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 it didn't phase him. And it's funny because, like, they also, they, they bring in the, like, there, there's a lot of confusion going on because Jack is also checking for, uh, uh, her name's something Law, uh, Kim Cattrall's character, yeah, yeah, yeah. who oh. also has green eyes. You know so, what's funny? She's kind of playing the April O'Neil role from the yeah. Ninja Turtles because yeah. he's, investigating low pan and all this yes. shadiness and, and all the crazy crime element that's going on in, in this Chinatown. Um, and, uh, it is San Francisco's Chinatown, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool, which also adds a layer to, to the, to the world building here. I mean, they're, yes. they're, they're building on the fact that this is this Chinatown. This is like one of the original Chinatowns. This yes. is where the, the Chinese immigrants were coming to first. Mm-hmm. And this is where they started you know, and building out the railroads and stuff, man. So like it's, and, 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 and it makes sense that all of this craziness would be concentrated and happening in this place, you know? And the thing is too, is that she's hip. Mm-hmm. He knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, like Burton and Wang, they're confused. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But soon when she comes on board, she's like, man, you didn't know that Lil Pan is, is, is like the, 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 the leader of the underworld. Yeah, I, I think these- Wang has just like, he, he knows more than Jack. But she knows more than even Wayne because yes. she's been investigating these guys for yeah. maybe months and years and at this point. Wayne pretty much only knows what Uncle Egg told. Him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and to your point as well, man, the world building on this on this movie is great because then you know not only do we get this 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 very magical world that's created, but then we get these special effects mm-hmm. and these these visuals that still hold up now. Yeah. You know this. The, the I mean the the, the creatures, the characters, everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and all these these lights and, and going on. And I mean, they're like when they're shooting the lightning and all. Yeah, this stuff. yeah. I think that was the thing. Like, cause um, as a kid, I remember 
seeing this one day finally and i didn't see the beginning of the film i probably caught it from the middle and on and it just blew my mind i was like not only was i getting kung fu with martial arts but then the magic they throwing lightning bolts and the the the, the crazy creatures like the makeup yes. effects like um, yes. the, like the the crazy Sasquatch on crack looking no, he looks like <laughs> like as if like like an orangutan yeah. and a werewolf and mm -hmm. a, a and, and and like Chewbacca's cousin all yeah. just got all mixed up. Yeah. Like I mean he's he's a even wild the makeup, dude, man. makeup on the old version of mm -hmm. Logan and, and the regular version. Like it's yes. it just really good at the time yes. to top of that time man like, like i don't know if fangoria was out at, at this right. time but that was probably a, that's probably a high price issue <laughs> if they ever yeah, did one on this, this that's probably going for big bucks now if you had that man but yeah, but yeah. and then in the, in, the, in the way that that this film you know with this world building and with all these creatures and these special effects mm -hmm. you know they really like dive into i like we were just talking about before we started the show we don't really know how much of of the the mythos of this this film is like you know pulled from actual ancient you know china or things like that but it really feels like this film created its own unique mythologies mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying things that that you know that are only unique to this film and without seeing this film you wouldn't even know about the three storms yeah. by the way all like kind of looked like reminiscent to raiden like who mm -hmm. knows if they would you know, made I'm, no, I'm, I'm gonna say that dude i don't think we get raiden without this film i think yes. raiden is a total homage to yes. to the three um you know and i, I, think, I feel the same I way bro flipped up by not making the other ones if you got yes. lightning if you got raiden why not make the lightning and the thunder yeah like and that would have been crazy yes. that would have been like you know how they made the different um you got scorpion you got uh yes. of sub-zero and, and smoke and and, and air mac and um, noob sabot like like they should have kept it going yeah, and yeah. added those the rain and the thunder to to, yeah. to the ravens and just, like <laughs> and, and to that point you know we'll just we'll just bring you know the costumes and the look of the characters as a mm -hmm. whole on all phases is yeah, dope man. and while we're on that subject i just gotta bring this up dude jack burton's boots <laughs> did, they, did they got a uh, any of those out? Did bro. someone make those? You know, make those? some they have make those, but I'll reach <laughs> under this table and be like, man, I don't got a pair of those Burton did they, boots. Did they, anybody ever recreate those? Or? I don't know, but they look like a pair of high techs mixed with Uggs. Oh, like, okay, okay. They're like they're like knee high. They 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 got like they look like they got little thimbles on the side. You know what? And they've got the round on the side like the old eight. Yeah, I'm looking at them now. Yeah, there are recreations though out there, but they're not quite. They're, they look like customs that someone made. I don't think anyone's you made. I'm saying uh, uh, an official version. Yeah, those look wild. Hey, they look man. Like Robin Hood will wear. <laughs> I will salute anyone who actually steps out the house wearing them jeans. Yeah, go man. hard, man. Kanye hey, might man. show up in them. <laughs> I don't days. know. I know one guy that won't. <laughs> you gotta be Jack Burton. You gotta hey, be man. a no nah, man you gotta be a cocksure ass hey man hey man wearing, wearing my burton shirt is good enough for me man that's as far as it goes not there what nobody think hey man i don't but i ain't putting them things on my feet i'm not i don't need ca uh, sweaty calves <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> and it looks hot out there, dude. I'm like, oh, it is hot. This San, yeah. well, San Francisco, I think it's a little bit cooler. They're they're NorCal, so like six hours from Los Angeles, so they're a little more temperate. Like their their winters are cooler, like ours, and you know, compared to what's going on in like Los Angeles, you know. So with all that going you know, on, he had the nerve <laughs> to have his jeans tucked in the boot as well. <laughs> It's yeah. interesting though. I mean, the special effects, they're fun, you know yeah. what I mean? Some of it is a little wonky, but I think it mostly holds up. And, and like I said, man, the, the mess of the, 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 the craziness that's going on here, man, this is a wild film, man. This is, but it's still one of Carpenter's best, man. It's just one of his more creative and fun ones. I don't know where this shows up in his filmography. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a look, but, um, but, but what else stands out to you, man? Oh, while I look, while we're, while we're talking about Carpenter, what I didn't know or wasn't really paying attention to, um, was not only did he direct this, you know what I'm saying? But then he also, he got the music credit and that just, that stood out to me when I was watching. I was like, bro, I never, I never noticed that before. So I did a little bit of backtracking mm -hmm. and it just, I mean, my mind just, dude, cause <laughs> I didn't realize 
this dude has so many music score yeah. credits. I mean, just just on a quick list. I mean, he has the 1976 um, Assault on Precinct 13. He's mm -hmm. got big, good movie. he's got Big Trouble. He's got Body Bags, which those that don't know that is a very dope anthology film. That was an HBO special, kind of under the radar. Stephen King's Christine from 1983, uh, Dark Star. He did Escape from L.A. and Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. Firestarter, the new one that just dropped that, you know, wasn't really that well, but I'm sure it had a good score. Um, the original Fog, Ghosts of Mars, a plethora of Halloween's dog. The new Firestarter? Uh, it, yes, 2022, dog. And then we got 1978's Halloween. We got um, Halloween 2 from 1981, Halloween 3 season of The Witch, which the song that plays in that, I'm not talking about the one they're playing with the mask and everything, mm -hmm. but the one that's playing at the end. Yeah, man, that mm -hmm. is that is dope. Like if you didn't know you was watching a Halloween film that I mean, just just listen to that. It is eerie. It is creepy. It is solid. Um, he also gets um, credits for Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends. He did uh, scores for In the Mouth of Madness, which is a bugged out movie. I can't wait till we talk about that. <laughs> one, bro. Um, mm -hmm. Prince of Darkness. Uh, well, let's see another one. Um, they Live. We talked about they lived till we were blue in the face and mm -hmm. didn't even bring up that. I didn't so, know, dude. I, I, I didn't, didn't know see. I didn't even know that. I didn't even go know to look. I, I always knew about the Halloween thing. And um, the interesting thing, I think he did music on the, the most recent Halloween because because the video yeah. was circulating around him. He did actually making you know music yeah. like, and that was cool. But yeah. but yeah, he's a musician too, man. That's a that's wild, dude. For someone yeah. to also be good at directing because that Halloween theme that's one of the greatest film themes ever made. Yeah. Yes. That's up there with with stuff that um, Hans Zimmer and and um, El Elfman have done. You yeah, know, like the Jaws theme, mm -hmm. yeah, like you're, you're like uh, like uh, the Jason scene, as simple as yeah. it is. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> hey, someone had to think that up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I mean, just just shout out John Carpenter for just being like a musical genius when it comes to just making, mm -hmm. you know, just good scores for good movies, and then also directing them at the same time. That, mm -hmm. That's like like the musician that the producer and then you know rhymes over it or or or, or sings over really? it i mean like, you know, know, he's I mean, he, he getting a little bit more bread too in the yeah. press because he got that you know what I'm he's able to hit that you know? drop when it comes he know exactly when it's coming that, yeah. that, you know so i thought that was dope um another thing that i love about this film just uh just going back to uh to the characters i mean you know we follow jack burton through this adventure and, and, and it almost looks like wang is his sidekick throughout mm -hmm. the whole time and then jack burton there's a point where he gets the tech he don't know how to use the tech he, mm -hmm. he can't, he don't even know he got the safety on. It's like, damn, dude. Like, yeah, but you, the, you ain't never had no gun before, mm -hmm. dog, but you, you talking all this stuff and you want to go to war with mm -hmm. all these magical individuals and you don't know that the safety's on, bro? You know what's interesting? Like, when we meet him, I think it's interesting. Just the character building. Um, He's a truck driver. That's how he yeah. ends up in China John. Um, looks like he's delivering pork, like live pigs. Yeah, or, something. But but that's his job, you know. Yeah. So so I think it's cool too. In the beginning, we see him driving toward Chinatown, and he's got a load. But he's on the road, and he's on his CB. And I just remember being like a little kid. Yeah. Like that was that was that's kind of old trucker culture. I don't know if they do it now anymore. But yeah, like being on that CB radio, I remember watching BJ and the Bear and mm -hmm. things like that. And that was a thing. They'd be on the CB, you know, just talking to each other or just killing time, just to pass time, or maybe. They're warning each other, yo, there's yeah. a speed trap up ahead or, or or weather conditions. And I know that that, that was part of it too. It's yes. almost like a replacement for talk radio it's in the days. It's like where, fire stories, dog. Yeah, where, where you would have those talk radio stations. Mm -hmm. I forgot, I don't remember names, but I remember just being on the road, taking road trips with some of my relatives and maybe we're starting at like three in the morning to get beat the traffic and all that. And then my uncle was into them type of shows mm -hmm. where it will just be a guy talking about, are UFOs real? And, and he's doing that yeah. on the CB and this. And I thought that was so cool is adding that, it's, it's character development without really, you know, Absolutely. being so blatant with it, man. And, and it's a cool and aspect of just, you know, 80s culture, man. And I think, you know, this is dope to have that in there. Where, where, where this, this point where, like I say, to me, it really just shifted gears is once Burton has the problem with the tech, man, I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they, they, they're surrounded. And this is where we see what Wang is really capable of. Because mm -hmm. Wang takes every, by the time he unjams the tech, takes the safety off, 
Wayne took out like nine, ten people. <laughs> yeah. Wayne got them hands mm -hmm. and feet because he was using both. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, you know what? Like everything that Wayne was saying up until that point, you know, it all makes sense now. Because there was like, there was one point where Burton's like, man, you know, we ain't going to do this. And Wayne's like, man, we're going to move like the wind, dog. Mm -hmm. Well, no, 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 duh. Wayne's the ninja on the low. Burton don't know that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like Burton's like, oh, yeah, man, over my dead body. And Wayne's like, if need be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These are things that's like, hey, man, I didn't take Wayne seriously. Yeah. I saw what he could do, you yeah, know? And, yeah. I, and my man was with it, yeah. you know? But, but I, I like how they did that with Wayne. It's like I'm gonna I'm hold it my cards until the to the end, you know, until I need until to really, really get to, to the yeah. action. And, 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 and there's some moments, man. Like like I love the finale of this film, like the last 35 minutes or so yes. when, when things are hitting the fan. And and basically at this point, um, um, Lopez gonna pull his ceremony off. He's got he's got the green eyed um you know Asian uh, woman, and then he's got Kim Cattrall who also has green eyes. He's like, I don't care which one of you it is, but one of y'all gonna give me he this, this green eyed man. Yeah. He was like, I can't I can't choose, and then after both of them complete the ritual, he's like, hey, 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 I'll just take you both. I'm yeah. like, oh, he got he got, he got a thing for the green eyes. <laughs> He's a man. I'm pulling out a bandage. Yeah, for real, for real, man. But like, but that's it. Yeah, to oh, your point, God, man. Dude. Like the ending of this is great because almost in a sense we get two endings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like after they they escape the first time, they realize as they're they're making their great escape, they're riding off. They realize they left both the ladies behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, like, like Wayne's like, yo, where's, where's my she was like, man, she's back there. And then, then, then Wayne's like, where's Gracie? Or uh, uh, Burton's like, where's Gracie? He's like, man, she's back there too. Yeah. So now they got to go back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this, this one they had to, then, then we really get a full, uh, you know, a full idea of what egg brings to the, to the table because yeah, they, yeah, have to yeah. break, they have man, to break him yeah. down. And then he, I mean, he's super Let's talk so on egg real quick because mm -hmm. that's how this film starts. And, 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 yeah. and now we watching it is, is, don't because we start the film at the end and and yes. egg is in there talking to some investigator who's asking him about uh, stuff in the investigator, investigators like man I don't, what are you talking about all this mystical what yeah and, and it's cool because then my man egg is like yeah. breaks the lightning yeah. out, and then the movie starts we get yeah, we get jack on the road yep the investigators trying yeah. to trying to down burton and eggs like man, you don't talk down on yeah. him like so, so essentially the film is just a re Telling of what happened, what happened from Wang's point of view, but also maybe that's maybe it'd be a thing. Think about it. This could be a reason why it's so wild because you know sometimes people retell stories and they exaggerate details a little bit and, all the time. You know, maybe, time. maybe maybe, maybe time. it wasn't three brothers that were shooting yeah. lightning. I don't I don't know who the team. But 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 then again, never mind because because uh. Uh, my man did have the lightning. Wayne did have a, he, he showed, he showed, he showed, he showed, he showed the proof. He was like, man, you don't yeah. believe me. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. You know, no. Hey, but, um, but, but, yeah. but eggs, ah, this one of his eyes don't, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's that's his magic thing. eye. It's not, <laughs> think about it. I think Spores Whitaker probably study him to, to get the raise. <laughs> I think there's something going on. I think I have a moment something, dude. <laughs> I think I have a moment something. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, but yeah, dude. As we move forward, and then we do, like you said, we get this epic final battle. Yeah, and they I love, come I love back to man. get the ladies. Yeah. You know, because I mean, this film ultimately, when you break it down into its its simplest form, mm -hmm. it is a testament of good versus evil. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it it's is, a question away. It's know? a question. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 action. It's mm -hmm. fantasy. Um, it's it's. Uh, appealing to young and old. It, it, I mean, this is one that, you know, you can sit and watch with the family. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if, if one in the family is six or seven and the yeah. other one's 67. You know, everyone can find enjoyment in this film. And this final battle gives us everything. It's mm -hmm. just like on 4th of July at the end, the finale, we're getting all the fireworks. I mean, yeah. they, they pull no punches. I mean, there's lightning being thrown, bodies mm -hmm. being thrown, I'm everything's being thrown, you know. I'm and you know, just all this martial arts. And that's another thing too. Um, we talked about a lot of things, but we didn't talk about the, you know, the martial arts choreography. And oh, the right. fight scenes yeah. are very well done. Um, for this to be such a, a fantastical film, 
the fight scenes are very mm -hmm. realistic. You know what I'm saying? So I think even though this was an, an American yeah, production, like they, I'm sure that they got a couple people oh, to yeah, come yeah, in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but but that's the thing though. Like it would have been a regular martial arts film, but they also added the mystical elements. They're not just yeah. fighting people who know. Kung Fu, these people got, my man's throwing lightning bolts and, and yes. they got to get a little bit creative to, to beat these guys, yeah. man. You know, and I think there's a point that they take like a potion that, that boosts them up a little bit or. I, I didn't, I can't remember that much. Uh, did they take a potion? I think somebody, I don't know. I could be it's, remembering it's, the wrong movie. Possible, or something, but I think, that's, that I think that might have happened, it, dude. It's, it's possible. I don't, I don't want to misinform, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yes. What's was going on? One no, of these, somebody got boosted. Something going on. Um, but I know uh, the, the three storms, they was flying. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were they crazy, were flying, man. With yeah. no wings. They, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, cause uh, was the, problem. the one, the one that Wayne took out, I mean, I mean, he flew across the room mm -hmm. on the ceiling to mm -hmm. try and take out Wang, and luckily Wang was good with the sword too. You know, yeah, they were a problem. And the little blob with all the eyes, that, yeah, right? That, that that's a good creature design. Like like that. Like it's it's like the the gorilla um, dude that was on yeah, crack. And you know what? Not for nothing. <laughs> the, the the actual creatures, like I said, the the gorilla and the eye guy. Mm -hmm. These look like things that you would have seen at the bar in the Star Wars scene. Yeah, 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 that, like, yeah, yeah. That, they were that good. You know, yeah. I mean, they looked. I mean, they just looked immaculate. And yeah, and like I said, what was this? Eighty six. This mm -hmm. is far from CGs yeah. even being thought of. So you know, just the like I said, the the, the effects crew and and, the, and the, the designers and everyone who came up with these ideas, man. Mm -hmm. Without that. This movie, we wouldn't be having this show right now. This, no, this, no. this, you know, this would just be another coaster or a frisbee. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wouldn't even be worth talking about. But you know, we get all this, all this magical stuff. You know, that's going on, this epic battle and everything. And then what really brings this film full circle is just like how it starts, kind of mm -hmm. like where it ended. This film ends kind of like how it started. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like you get, you know, you get Jack Burton going, you know, back into the truck. I mean, he got, he got the woman. It's like, mm -hmm. dog, you went through all this to save her. You were chasing after her the whole movie. And now you got her and you're like, yeah, by the way, you know, trucker life. It's, you know, it is what it is. I got to get back on the road. Yeah. And then it shows him, you know, get back in the truck. That was crazy to me. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, he kind of just blows her off. She yeah. was like, oh, she was like I'll see you soon. And yeah. he was like, Right, <laughs> bro. You what? You are a special kind of yeah. arrogant, Jack Burton. Mm -hmm. But I mean, who knows, man? Maybe arrogance comes with them boots. Yeah. But yeah. um, but then you know it's cool because you know once he gets in the truck, first thing he does, he picks up the the, the CB, starts telling the story again. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And and he's he's bringing in elements of you know everything that they went through. And you know one thing that just tripped me, which I would have loved if they would have did. Not now. You know, thirty years later. Because that's the thing. Like, like I feel like I would have much rather have seen a sequel to this than Escape from L.A. They gave like, the sequel. Like, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like he's riding, and then you look at the yeah. back of his truck back, and, <laughs> and the gorilla thing <laughs> yeah. jumped out, out the box. And so, like, the truck. so it's kind of just holding on to the bottom of the truck. Yeah, like, and, and, through. Yeah, so man. I mean, they they could have you know gave us a big trouble too if they mm -hmm. really really wanted to. I don't know why they didn't. Yeah. Um, I you know, but some I don't know what it did at the box office at the time, man. Like I gotta check into that, man. Um, let me see, let me keep going. I'm gonna see what. It but the numbers yeah i mean but i mean like, like i said outside of that i mean like i said i mean i could gush on this film just gush on it i mean you know i, I do feel like we we hit a lot of the 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 key points but um you know like i said um outside of you know everything we already talked about i mean i would just anyone who hasn't seen it i almost feel bad for you you know i would i would strongly suggest you know that you know if you have time check this out this is a dvd that's worth owning a blu-ray that's worth owning yeah. um but the cool thing is too it's on hulu right now so so here's what happened um the budget they're saying was probably between 19 and 25 million box office it did 11.1 .1 million so kind of suffered there but i yeah. think they probably ended up making that money back on um, on the back on end. vcr rentals and and just dvd yeah. sales now like like yeah. you know this is one of those ones that that i think was ultimately profitable but in the moment i could probably see why it got passed over you know and you know well, they look back in hindsight and that's the thing because it's a, it was a film that we weren't 
used to seeing from Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Carpenter normally gave us um, uh, kind of quasi more serious films. I mean, now granted, mm -hmm. like a film like They Live wasn't as serious per se, but it was it was a little more on the horror notes, and and it was a little more um, serious with the subject matter. Where this was this was just you know balls to the wall fun, you know what I mean? And and that probably also you know kind of um, saw, you know made a lot of Carpenter fans from what we were used to getting from him with all his uh, his horror prestige kind of like a little it deterred them it's a deterrent mm -hmm. you know what i mean but this is also this is one of those films like you said when it comes to you know it coming out for rentals and stuff this is one of those ones where you know say you got a couple you know, you're a little dude or mm -hmm. a, a little 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 young lady and you got the sleepover yeah like yo you ain't seen big trouble <laughs> oh it's going it's down because this is one that you know not only is it fun to watch flying solo but it is funner to watch with a group yeah, yeah. you know what i mean because mm -hmm. there there is there is such good banter in this film such good dialogue but then you also get the the wow factor from how everybody's perceiving everything that they're seeing in front of them mm -hmm. you know what i mean which then just also helps elevate this film you know from the viewing standpoint yeah yeah, I mean, this one kind of came, um, I mean, I, I would say this is middle of his filmmaking filmography. I mean, uh, Dark Star, Solo Precinct 13, Halloween, Someone's Watching Me, Elvis, uh, The Fog, um, Escape from New York, The Thing, Pristine, Starman, and then we get Big Little, Little, Trouble in Little China in 86. You see all those monumental... You know, a lot of them. We're going to get to a lot of them. <laughs> we're going to... We're going to... We're going to... Uh, we but uh, 80s, after Big Trouble, he did uh, Prince of Darkness, which is... Eh. But then they live uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man with... Uh, I think that, that was Debbie the one thing. with Debbie Chase. That yeah. was good, man. Uh, In the Mouth of Madness, which was 94. That was actually a really good film, man. That was one of his recent... Um, that's um, um, Sam Neill, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Plays the author and is what he's writing is coming to life. Yeah. The Village of the Dam. Um, that's also a good one, man. It's creepy. It's is that a remake of, of the original Village of the Dam? Or that I don't know. I know that one kind of like it, it. It hit me. Or was there a remake after I, that? Th there might have been. I remember that one because that's the the little weirdo. Kids yeah, little with the kids white with the red hair, eyes. And it kind of like it kind of hits like like Invasion of the Body Snatchers mixed with Children of the Corn. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way, it was, yeah. it was just trippy. Uh, and after that, Escape from L.A. I remember that. I went to the movies to see that. Man, <laughs> Vampires '98. Uh, I like that one. That was a cool take on Van. Vampires, yeah, dude. Yeah, that was that the one was with uh, James Woods, man. Uh, Ghost of Mars. I actually like that, man. A lot of people hated that, but I, I mess with it. It's, just, yeah. it's goofy. Uh, Ice Cube. And then he, uh, I think the last director credit he got is the Ward. Uh, I saw that. And that's, I think I saw this too, man. Is that, um, what's her name? Uh, who's the, the, um, oh, that's starring Amber Heard, dude. Maybe I'm confusing the Ward with that Naomi Watts, um, I, I think actually, it was like the I, I or something remake, something like I got that, that on, uh, no, that, yeah, the remake was, uh, of the I was, well, the oh, ring, I think, maybe. Okay. Maybe, yeah, yeah, no, like the that. ward, I got the, uh, the DVD things. of that. I actually, I got it around when it came out. I'm gonna have to rewatch it before I give any mm -hmm. info on it. Yeah, but yeah. It was, it was entertaining. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I was glad I bought it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but, but this thing, it's just, it's just a fun film, man. It's pop culture. Look at Bob's shirt. I always yeah, see man. Things being made in relation to this movie, referencing that film, and it's crazy, man. It's a testament. Yeah. I mean, it still holds up as a good time, man. You know, and um, yeah, yeah. That's and, all I can say, man. It, 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 it also it, it shows, you know, how diverse Carpenter really is. You know, as a like, filmmaker, yeah, as a yeah. filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know, because like, like you when you when you think of like, let's say, just I'm you know, just spitballing, like maybe Wes Craven. Mm -hmm. you don't see him making a lot of nah, non horror yeah. films, yeah. Or, you know. But John Carpenter is right up there with Craven, mm -hmm. Clyde Barker, with 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 Mr. Stephen Kang, you mm -hmm. know, as as a, a horror movie making icon. Yeah. But then he just could make a film this fun. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just it just shows like like hey man, you know, he's not no one trick pony. 
which I think that that is just, that is awesome. Um, I said, I love this film. Always have, always will. You know, um, I, I can talk about it for another, you know, hour, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll free you, man. But yeah, I think that's it, folks, man. We're going to wrap this one up, man. And yeah, man, go see this film if you have it. If you have, rewatch it. It's great. It's on Hulu right now, too, man. If, you, if you're wondering, you know, where if you got Hulu, yeah. um, you know, you can watch it there definitely in its entirety. Um, but yeah, that's it, man. We're gonna be back soon. I don't know what the next film is gonna be, but we got some I things do. coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> we got some things coming for you, folks, man. Stay tuned. We appreciate the feedback. We're actually growing at a really good rate, man. We appreciate you, you folks for checking us out and taking the time. Mm -hmm. So subscribe, keep doing that, keep watching, keep telling your friends about us, man. And we're gonna be here. We ain't yep. going nowhere, man. Y'all yep. done gave us too much love now. That's we, it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. We ain't turning the love switch off, man. We're nah, nah. going to keep feeding us. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it, folks, man. We're going to be out of here, man. This is Monkey. Catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Follow us at Classics of Cinematics on Instagram for, you know, we give you little hints of what we're going to do, you know, little updates, little news bits and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me at Bobby Blockbuster 118 on Instagram. Look for the 118 because I don't know which one of y'all was, was trying to make a um an account with my man's name. Yo, we had to report that. I don't yeah. know what's going on, man. Y'all y'all trying to y'all trying to have some of Bob Shine rub yeah, off man. on you, man. We, we know what's up. We see yeah, what's going yeah. on out there. There's, <laughs> on, there's only one blockbuster. That's, <laughs> that's just like there's only one actual blockbuster running running movie store left. There's only one. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, fool. All right, man. We out of here. <laughs> <laughs>